Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins, I'm a Linode Developer Advocate, and in this video what we're going to be doing is talking about using Arch as your server distribution. Arch Linux is a rolling release distribution known for being cutting edge, very customizable, and giving you control of almost every single package on your system, but generally also having the con of being pretty difficult to set up, at least compared to most other Linux distributions. Its new packages also make it pretty popular in the development and gaming communities due to it having newer versions of dependencies and a newer version of the Linux kernel itself. And it's also very different compared to most LTS Linux distributions that are used in the server community, such as Debian, Ubuntu, or anything in the Red Hat Linux family. So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is quickly setting up our very own Arch Linux server on the node, talking about some of the advantages and disadvantages as well as going over some specific use cases. So let's go ahead and dive on in. Now first, before we get too far, I do have to preface this entire video by saying, actually using Arch in a production environment probably is not the best idea. As we'll discuss in this video, Arch has some significant problems when it comes to overall uptime and stability, two factors that are very important if you are trying to host something or run a service that you need working all the time. Arch Linux is known to have packages just break on updates and dependencies get screwed up. So it's going to be something that requires a lot more work to actually keep up and running compared to something that is more commonly used like an Ubuntu or a CentOS or something like that. With this, as we said earlier, Arch is a very minimal distribution, meaning it's gonna work great on weaker hardware, or if you pick the lowest specification for your cloud instance, it's going to be very performant. It's very customizable to suit your needs, so you could switch the different kernels, different shells, your firewall configurations, basically whatever. And due to this limited nature, it does make Arch a little bit harder to set up initially, especially for a minimal server install, because you're gonna to want to make sure you have all the right packages together and build it yourself to make sure everything is going to work properly. Another pro to Arch Linux is the rolling release nature, meaning that there aren't set versions that you're gonna to have to do big upgrades to. For example, Ubuntu releases a new LTS version every two years. As with Arch instead, you're just gonna keep updating the very same Arch install. However, like any pro with Arch, there are cons, and this may save some of the technical debt of having to go and upgrade to newer versions, but you're gonna to have to update far more frequently, and updates are gonna require some manual intervention here and there. For example, you can see here on the homepage of Arch Linux, a lot of the latest news things are gonna involve things that you may need to fix after updates. For example, this one right here needs manual intervention. There's been issues with Grub Bootloader lately. And if we go ahead and scroll down here, we can see more examples of update requires manual reconfiguration. So that is definitely something to keep note of. Another pro that I mentioned earlier is Arch Linux has a lot of newer packages. A lot of other distributions hold back updates in the name of stability and preventing breakage. An example of where Arch might actually be a decent option is if you're trying to just self-host your very own Nextcloud instance and you don't want to use a containerized system like Snap Packages, but at the same time you want the very latest and greatest packages and versions on your system, Arch might be a good option for that. But again, this does come with the overall con of some possible breakages when you update, making the whole process more drawn out and basically not worth it. Another thing that's pretty good about Arch is all the free resources that are available. Arch is nice though, because it does have resources such as the Arch Wiki, which contains hundreds, if not thousands of various articles and guides to go ahead and help you get things set up. And there's also the Arch user repositories, which contains thousands of unsupported, but community maintained packages that are available to install. However, these are uh, could be a hit or miss when it comes to the overall quality and actual maintenance of these packages. Now, you may be wondering, what are some actual use cases for using Arch Linux? Generally, if you want to do some of the things that you're gonna want a server instance for, you're gonna want to use something stable like Ubuntu, Debian, something like that. Whether that be hosting websites, server instances, or really anything in a containerized system. But let's say you are a developer trying to create some server-related software. Arch is a good testing ground when you need to test your software on top of newer dependencies. Yes, if you're trying to develop for Ubuntu or Debian, it's probably better just to stay in that environment, 
But if you're trying to future-proof your software with newer packages and dependencies, it may be a good testing ground for that. Another use case is that AUR we just mentioned earlier. If you're trying to run some sort of weird piece of software that has only a few stars on GitHub, chances are there might be a package in the Arch user repositories for it, making deploying that software a little bit easier. And you could always go to the Arch user repository website and actually verify that packages you want are on there if they're not available on other systems. AUR aside, the Arch repositories themselves have a lot of server software, including WordPress, Drupal, and Nextcloud. And the Arch Wiki has dedicated pages for setting up a lot of the server software, including the three that we just mentioned. But with all this, probably the only valid use case, in my opinion, is just for learning and kind of tinkering around, as Arch Linux is a very good learning experience. The minimalism of Arch Linux alongside with the wiki makes Arch one of the very best grounds for learning how Linux works. If you're doing this locally, the install process manually teaches you how to set up several things, including how disk partitioning works, including mounting those partitions using SFTAB, and what kind of software actually goes into a Linux system, among other things. All these things make Arch actually a pretty good option for a home server, especially in something just like a home lab, but makes much less sense when you're trying to use this for more enterprise purposes. As actually running Arch in that regard will probably cost a company a lot of money to keep up and running properly. Now one of the more difficult things is to actually install Arch, but on the note it is very easy to at least initially dive into the process. Here this is just the basic Linode create page. If you do want to try this out, check out the link down below for a $100 60 day credit to get you up and running. Here under choose distribution we have images. Here we have a bunch of different stuff including CentOS, we have Arch right there, but in addition we have Alma Linux and a whole bunch of things you probably are actually would rather use, uh, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, if you're trying to actually use something that's a little more stable. But in this case we want to go ahead and play around with Arch, so I'm just going to select Arch Linux here, pick a region that's closest to me, and like I said earlier it's a very minimal distribution, so we could go ahead and just spin this up on a nanode 1 gig and it's going to run completely fine. Obviously, we can upgrade if you actually do end up using this for something and you need a little bit more resources, storage, whatever it may be. I'm going to go ahead and create my root password here. And then just like that, I'm going to click on create Linode and we are spinning up our very own Arch Linux server here on Linode. And one thing to know as you spin up Linode, you could always go ahead and launch the Lish console here. And the Lish console is nice because you could actually see the process as well as booting up and all that. So we can see localhost login, we could go ahead and type in root and then the password we just created. And here we are, we're in Arch Linux. Arch uses the Pacman package manager and if we do an SYU, this is going to go ahead and do a full system update as well as refreshing our repositories. And we can see some of the things that it needs to go ahead and update if we hit yes to continue. And while we got that update going, I'm actually going to log in through a terminal, so I'm just going to copy this SSH access right here, and then go ahead and connect. We are going to say yes, this is our server, type in that password, and then there we go. One thing I do want to grab real quick, just so we can show that this is running what it's supposed to, is the ever so popular program NeoFetch that is available in the repositories. So let's go ahead and continue with that installation. And then now within here, if we go ahead and run Neo, you can see this is Arch Linux and we can see some information about our system. Packages, we have 181. This is Bash and we can see the default memory usage is at 100 megabytes of RAM, which is very nice. Now something that's actually probably a decent use case is installing Docker as everything's containerized. All the dependencies are actually within Docker. So there will probably be less issues doing something like this. So to install it, I'm just going to grab Docker Compose there and then make sure, of course, we just have Docker. So then it's going to go ahead and grab all of those dependencies. And of course, it's a little more complicated than that. You'd want to go over to the Arch Linux page here and go through the actual usage and installation, including getting the service set up and all that. And from there, you can proceed to install whatever Docker containers you want and use Arch as your server. Again, please know everything else I've mentioned previously in this video as far as running Arch in production environments. So with all that, that's really how easy it is to go ahead and install Arch on the node and begin tinkering and playing around with it. It is a fantastic learning tool that I would recommend, whether it be on the node, 
playing around on your home lab. It's, it's just a great learning experience. And with all that, again, if you do want to go ahead and get set up with Linode, there'll be a link down below for that $100 credit. Make sure you check out the other videos on this channel as there is a whole bunch of wonderful cloud computing guides, tutorials, informational videos, whatever it may be, including one I did recently on setting up your very own Pi-hole server with a VPN. So with all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.